Does a caloric surplus really matter for building muscle? Like, does consuming more calories build more muscle? Or do you just need to have just a slight caloric surplus to send a signal to build muscle? Let's break it down. A lot of it comes down to just independent timing. Like, what does it look like at one very particular moment? Like, if you are in a surplus right this second, then you're probably having some anabolic signaling happening right this second. But if three hours from now you're technically in a deficit, does that mean that you're burning muscle? Well, it could be. It's always a checks and balances of how many periodic surpluses can we be in and how many periodic deficits can we be in by leading up to at the end of a week or the end of a month, we need to have slightly more surplus periods than we do deficit periods. If we look at it just as the simple aggregate of how many calories did we consume in a day or how many calories did we consume in a week, it really gets muddied because a surplus at a certain point in time is going to do a different thing within the body than a surplus at a different point in time. If I'm in a surplus when my body is rebuilding from a workout, there's a good chance those calories are going to come in and help me build muscle. But if I'm in a surplus at a time where I've been very sedentary and don't have any anabolic signaling, then I'll really build fat, right? Anyhow, let's break it down a little bit more because there's some really interesting studies. One in particular that was published in the Journal of Human Kinetics. Uh, before I get into that, after this video, check out Thrive Market. If you're bulking or cutting, whatever, I think you'll get a big kick out of Thrive Market because they make it so you don't have to go to the grocery store. You can get all your foods delivered to your doorstep. So when it comes down to like your carbohydrate sources, everything like that, or your keto sources if you're doing that, or if you're intermittent fasting, whatever the case may be, they are super convenient. Don't have to go to the grocery store. It gets delivered to your doorstep. They've been a supporter of this channel for a long time and you can sort by whatever kind of dietary pattern you're doing, keto, paleo, fasting, whatever, make it that easy. So thank you Thrive Market for making this possible and there's a link down below exclusively for my subscribers or people watching this video so you can get a free gift when you try out Thrive Market today. So this Journal of Human Kinetics study was really fascinating because it looked at just what we're talking about. It said, okay, let's take a look at one group of people that are consuming like 6,000 calories at 200 pounds, weighing 200 pounds, consuming like 6,000 calories. Another group that's consuming 4,500 calories at 200 pounds. Now, granted, it was broken down in the metric, yada, yada, but I'm simplifying it here. Okay. And they said, let's have them resistance train six days a week for four weeks. Well, they certainly found at the end of the four weeks that the group that ate 6,000 calories versus 4,500 calories, they ended up putting on more muscle. They had a 2.7% increase in muscle mass compared to a 1.1% increase in muscle mass. So if you stopped right there and you looked at that, you'd say, Yes, absolutely, more calories equal more muscle. That makes sense, okay? But when you look a little bit further, you also see, oh, well, the 6,000 calorie group gained 7.4% fat, okay? And the 4,500 calorie group only gained, had an increase of 0.8% fat. Now, muscle is still muscle. At the end of the day, the higher calorie group built more muscle. So if you were after just flat out, how much muscle can you put on in the shortest amount of time? more calories will get you there. But you also have to factor in where the line of diminishing return is because of how much fat you're putting on too. If you put that fat on, it's going to be increasingly difficult to maintain your muscle mass when you peel that fat off. We have to remember that when we drop weight, when we cut weight, we a lot of times put ourselves into a deficit where our body from an energy preservation standpoint will actually break down muscle too. So we have to really get kind of granular about that. So then you ask yourself, okay, if I put on a lot of fat, what is my risk that I'm going to end up losing a lot of that muscle in the process? Now, the other side of the equation too is, as you get more fat on you, you're going to have more inflammatory cytokines, which inhibit anabolic signaling. Okay, they make it so that once you have more fat on you, it's harder to put muscle on. So at some certain point, you have to draw a line with what kind of fat content you're willing to have on to build muscle. The long and the short of it is you can stay very lean, in fact, even get leaner while trying to put on muscle if you have things timed right. Okay, the signaling and the surplus just needs to happen periodically. You need to put yourself into a caloric surplus to have an anabolic signal, but remember that that caloric surplus doesn't need to be measured over 24 hours. You can have specific timing of meals, say post-workout, things like that, where maybe you're having an abundance of calories at that point. It's all about signaling, how you signal mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin. Again, 
the study is clear. More calories is going to put more muscle on you, but that's not a very holistic way of looking at it. There's a lot of people out there, even Greg Doucette, who, you know, some of you follow him too. Like, he's a big believer in that, staying lean in the off season as a bodybuilder. It just makes a lot of sense. Greg and I, you know, yes, sometimes we have a little bit of, you know, our things, but at the end of the day, we get along quite well and we have talked to each other offline. Anyway, the point is, is that people think that we oppose each other on a lot of things. I fully agree with his stance on this, right? So if we stay lean, we have better anabolic signaling. If we stay lean, then we can do more with the calories that we take in. So staying lean year round is probably a better way holistically to build muscle. But yes, if you ask the simple, simple layout of it, more calories is gonna put on more muscle. See you tomorrow.